the first inning. Philadelphia scores first as Tommy Herr hits a ground ball double into right field. This will score Lenny Dykstra easily and make the score one to nothing Philadelphia. Herr now has 38 RBIs for the season. Then in the top of the second inning, Philadelphia added another run as Darren Dalton sliced a double into left field. This gets past Todd Benzinger, who's out and left in an unusual lineup that the Reds are going with today, and that made the score 2 to nothing Philadelphia in the second. Jose De Jesus was pitching well for Philadelphia here in the bottom of the second inning. He throws a curveball to get Todd Benzinger looking. Then in the top of the fifth inning, Philadelphia gives De Jesus some more runs to work with as Ricky Jordan will hit a double with the bases loaded. Jordan drives this one to the right center field gap, and coming in to score will be Dykstra, Von Hayes, and Reddy. That gives Jordan 35 RBIs for this season, and it increases the Philadelphia lead to 5 to nothing. Then in the top of the sixth inning, they made it 6 to nothing as Darren Dalton hit his second RBI double of the game. This one into the left field corner that scores Dykstra and gives him 25 RBIs. So it's 6 to nothing Philadelphia in the sixth. Then with the score 6 to 1 Philadelphia, Glenn Braggs hit a single in the bottom of the seventh inning into right field. That scored Ron Oster and made the score 6 to 2. But then Lenny Dykstra made a great catch on this drive by Herm Winningham. Dykstra goes back to the wall and saves two runs with this play, and Philadelphia went on to win by that final of 6 to 2. Their winner was DeJesus. He's 2 and 2. The loser, Scudder, is 2 and 3. Out one in St. Louis on Sunday afternoon as the St. Louis Cardinals win their fourth straight game, 6-4 to four over the slumping San Diego Padres. San Diego got on the board first in the top of the first inning as Tony Gwynn picked up his 40th RBI of the year with a double down the right field line scoring Bip Roberts. The Padres finished an 11-game road trip on Sunday, and they won only one game going 1-10 during that stretch. In the bottom of the first inning, the Cardinals tied the score at 1 as Vince Coleman would lead off against Derek Lilliquist and smash a solo home run to left field. His fourth home run of the season, RBI number 23, and the game was tied at one in the bottom of the first inning. Going back to the top of the first inning, Bryn Smith, the starting pitcher for the Cardinals, would strike out Jack Clark. Clark not too happy at home plate umpire Jerry Lane's call, but he doesn't say much. He just walks off, throws away his bat and his helmet. Apparently, Clark let it simmer a little bit because when he came to the bat in the top of the fourth inning, before he even stepped in the box to get set, he was tossed out of the game by Jerry Lane. To say Clark was mad would be a little bit of an understatement as he went a little crazy on the field. First, he threw his helmet. He had to be restrained by his manager, Greg Riddick. A couple of times he got right in the face of Jerry Lane and then finally he left the field, but he wasn't done there as he threw a couple of helmets onto the field. Jack Clark with a few choice words for Jerry Lane as his frustration seemed to be showing the Padres just not getting it done as of late as they have lost seven straight games. After a Pedro Guerrero sack fly made it 2-1 to one. in the bottom of the fourth inning, Bryn Smith picked up his second hit of the game and his third RBI of the year with a double scoring Tom Pagnazzi to make it 3-1 to one St. Louis. The Padres came back in the top of the fifth inning with three runs to go ahead. They went ahead on this two RBI single by Bip Roberts, scoring Thomas Howard and Derek Lilliquist. That made it four to three at San Diego. The Cardinal fans would go home happy as St. Louis won their fourth consecutive game for the first time this season. A sacrifice fly by Pedro Guerrero, his second of the game, would tie it at four, leading to this Tom Pagnazzi double in the bottom of the seventh inning, scoring Willie McGee and Jose Akendo. That made it 6-4 to four St. Louis, and that was the final score. Ken Daly got the win. He's 2-2. Two and two. Greg Harris fell to 4-5. and five. On Sunday afternoon, a relaxed-looking Don Zimmer and his Chicago Cubs are hosting the San Francisco Giants at Wrigley Field. The top of the fourth, no score, two outs, and no one. National League RBI leader Matt Williams against Chicago starter Sean Bosky, and he strokes a solo home run to left field that gives the Giants a quick one to nothing lead. Home run number 19 and RBI number 80 for Matt Williams. And in the time-honored tradition at Wrigley Field, a fan who caught the home run ball of the opposing team throws it back onto the field. In the bottom of the fourth, a great play coming up here by Matt Williams with two outs and Luis Salazar on first base. Juan Dunson to bat against San Francisco star Don Robinson. A sharp ground ball down the third baseline with the runner going. Matt Williams with a great backhand stop and gun to first base to nip Dunson. Clark throws back across to Williams unnecessarily as Dunson was the third out of the inning. So we take one more look at this outstanding play by Giants third baseman Matt Williams who's doing it both with the glove and the bat this afternoon at Wrigley Field. 
Cubs would get on the scoreboard in the bottom of the sixth with two outs and Dave Clark on second base. Schwan dunks in the bat. He grounds a single to left field. Clark scores easily to tie the game up at one all. RBI number 46 on the season for Cubs shortstop Shawan Dunstan. In the bottom of the seventh with one out and Sean Bosky on first base, Ryan Sandberg will triple deep to center field off of Brett Butler's glove. Bosky scores all the way from first base. Cubs go ahead of the Giants by the score of 2-1. to one. RBI number 62 on the season for Cubs second baseman Ryan Sandberg. Moving on to the top of the eighth with two outs and pinch runner Scott Gerelts in second base. Brett Butler will slice a double down the left field line off of Sean Bosky. Scott Gerelts comes in to score, and this ties the game up at two all. RBI number 26 on the season for Giants center fielder Brett Butler. The bottom of the eighth with two outs and Dunson on first base. Joe Girardi against Adley Hammaker, and he'll double the left field, driving in Dunson to give the Cubs a 3-2 lead. RBI number 25 for Girardi. Cubs would add a second run in the bottom of the eighth and win by the final of 4-2. Paul Ossemacher was the winner in relief. He's 3-2. The losing pitcher was Adley Hammaker. He's 4-5. Jeff Pico picked up his second save. The Cubs sweep the series. Yankees took advantage of five errors by the Twins and scored 10 unearned runs to defeat the Twins by a final of 10 to 6. With the score tied at one in the top of the third inning, Don Mattingly gave the Yankees a 2 to 1 lead. His 35th RBI in the year, a single to center field, scoring Alvaro Espinosa. Oscar Azucar would then give the Yankees a 4 to 1 lead as he came up later in the top of the third inning and would smack a two run homer off Minnesota starter Scott Erickson. His second home run, RBIs number two and three, scoring Don Mattingly to make it four to one. Andy Hawkins started for the Yankees, and in the bottom of the fourth inning, he would get an unusual strike as he threw a pitch to Randy Bush. Holy cow! That was a knockdown pitch right Holy there. Foul ball. Holy God! Andy Hawkins' pitch sails over the head of Randy Bush, knocking the bat out of his hand. That was a strike, and Bush would later ground out. In the bottom of the fifth inning, the Twins pulled to within 4-2 to two as Shane Mack picked up his 16th RBI in the year with a single to right field. John Moses came in ahead of the throw, and the Twins pulled to within two in the bottom of the fifth. But in the top of the sixth inning, Matt Noakes would single to right field. Shane Mack's throw would hit Oscar Azokar trying to go into third base. On the error, Azokar came in to score to make it 5-2 to two Yankees. All of the Yankee runs on Sunday were unearned. The Twins got two runs in the bottom of the seventh inning, and in the bottom of the eighth inning, they went ahead at 6-5 to five as Shane Mack picked up his second RBI of the game with a the Brewers and Mariners a split a four-game series as Seattle wins the final game 4-3 to three on Sunday afternoon in Milwaukee. In the top of the first inning, Henry Cotto gave the Mariners a one to nothing lead as he picked up his 22nd RBI of the year with a bloop single to left field, scoring Greg Briley. In the top of the second inning, they increased that lead to two to nothing as Harold Reynolds got his 37th RBI of the year. A single to right field, Dave Valley came in to score, and the Mariners led by two in the top of the second inning. They looked to do more damage in the top of the second inning, but a great catch by Greg Vaughn would deny them as Greg Briley hit one down the left field line, but Vaughn made a nice running catch and crashed into the wall. Brian Holman went seven and two-thirds innings, allowing only three hits for the Mariners to pick up the victory. There he strikes out Greg Vaughn in the bottom of the fourth inning. In the bottom of the second inning, the uh, Brewers pulled to within two to one as Dave Parker launched a solo home run to right field, his 14th home run in the year in RBI number 64, and Seattle's lead was cut in half. In the top of the sixth inning, a milestone for Alvin Davis of the Mariners as he sent a Ted Higuera pitch into right field for an RBI single. For Davis, that was his 1,000th career hit as a Mariner. He became the first member of the Mariners with 1,000 career hits with Seattle. Davis's 33rd RBI in the year made it 3-1 to one Milwaukee. Then later in the top of the sixth inning, Pete O'Brien would make it 4-1 to one with a single to center field scoring Henry Cotto. In the bottom of the sixth inning, the Brewers made the final score 4-3 to three as Robin Yount went the opposite way for a two-run homer his ninth on the year. Mike Brumley would come in to score. That made it 4-3, to three, but that was the final score as Mike Schooler pitched the final inning and a third to record his 26th save on the year. He and Brian Holman combined on a four-hitter. Here he gets Greg Brock to fly out the center field, ending the game. He picks up his 26th save on the year in relief of Brian Holman, who is now 9-7. and seven. Ted Higuera took the loss for the Brewers. He fell to 6-5, and 4-3 to three Mariners. In a bit of news, the Milwaukee Brewers earlier on Sunday placed relief pitcher Chuck Krim on the 15-day disabled list with a torn muscle under his left rib cage. Krim suffered the injury on Saturday's game against the Seattle Mariners, and he was forced to leave the game in the fifth inning. 
after suffering an injury while throwing a pitch. Rogers and the Montreal Expos are in town to play the Astros. In the top of the first inning, the Expos get on the board first as Tim Raines lines a triple into the right field corner. This will score Dave Martinez on the hit and run play, and that makes the score one to nothing Montreal. That's the 32nd RBI of the season for Reigns. Then in the top of the second inning, shortstop Eric Yelding of the Astros makes a nice backhand play on the one hopper by Andres Galarraga, and then the strong throw to get Galarraga 6-3. In the bottom of the second inning, the Astros tied the game up as Glenn Wilson hit a ground ball double into the left field corner that scored Ken Caminiti, and it tied the game up at 1. That's the 37th RBI of the season for Wilson. In the top of the third inning, Montreal retook that one-run lead as Dave Martinez hit a solo home run deep to right field. This is his eighth home run of the season, and that ties a career high for him. So Mark Gardner was working with a 2-1 to one lead. Here we see him in the bottom of the fourth inning, picking up his third strikeout of the game as he gets Javier Ortiz swinging. But the Expos ran into some trouble in the bottom of the seventh inning, and Craig Biggio hit a single to center field that scored Ken Caminiti and tied the game up at two. Then, in the bottom of the eighth inning, in a surprise move, Franklin Stubbs had a bunt single that scored Eric Yelding from third base, making it 3-2 to two Houston after eight. 3-2 to two turned out to be the final score. As Dave Smith came in and pitched the ninth inning, he struck out the side. Here he gets Spike Owen to end it. The winning pitcher in the game was Augusto. He's 5-4. The loser, Dave Schmidt, is 3-3, three three, while Dave Smith picks up his 18.